Gerard Batten, um, leader of UKIP. Gerard, thanks for waiting patiently to talk to us. Um, first of all, uh, your perspective on the campaign as UKIP performed. What would you say to people? Uh, well, it was a very disappointing result, but it wasn't entirely a um, surprising result because uh, when I took over as leader or interim leader two months ago, there was no campaign. Absolutely nothing had been done when this should have been planned at least six months to 12 months before. So we had uh, very little time to put a campaign together and in actual fact to even find candidates. We managed to get 554 candidates. We picked ourselves up from the bottom. I knew that it was going to be a difficult result. I'd hoped for more wins. Um, but in fact, I did uh, kind of predict on with Joe Coburn on Tuesday that I expected us to get between 5 to 7 percent of the vote. Uh, on an analysis of about uh, 16 councils, 100 candidates, it's about 7.5 so far. So I think I was fairly accurate there. And that means that we're still a force to be reckoned with because if you can get six, uh, you know, 5 to 7 percent of the votes in a general election, you're a force to be... Yeah, but hang on, Gerard, you know as well as I do, you're on three seats at the moment. Uh, you know, you've lost 121. Um, uh, it's difficult to define that as a force to be reckoned uh, with. Well, uh, I, I had, I had not, I'm not saying that's a good result. I've been perfectly honest with you and very disappointed in that, and I hope we've done better. In the circumstances, as I said, I don't think anyone in UKIP will be vastly surprised by that. Uh, but you've got to remember that in the past we have, we have uh, gained... Uh, a re uh, influence and result in politics. We got the referendum without having any seats in Parliament whatsoever um, at, uh, you know, during our long history of campaigning for that. And if we can still command 5 to 7 percent of the vote now in the situation that we have been left in, then I think that's a strong base for us to build on for the future. The point is, you know better than I do, that uh, after you know, nearly two years after the referendum, uh, Theresa May now trying to get some kind of Brexit deal together, uh, the question's been asked repeatedly, and it will be asked after mm. this performance again, no matter how hard you've worked. What's the point? What's mm. the point of UKIP now? <clears throat> well, I think that people are going to realise that we're not going to get a full exit. I mean, two, you're quite right, two years of doing nothing when in actual fact they should have got straight on to the job the week after the referendum. But Mrs May was a Remainer, she doesn't really want to leave anyway. We have a Labour Party that doesn't really want to leave. And what they're trying to do is delay the whole process so that we end up with a deal whereby, well, we, we leave but we don't really leave because there'll be so many constrictions and impediments on us anyway that we might as well not have bothered. Or they'll try and find a way of overturning the referendum altogether. And I think when we get into the next general election, you may find that UKIP's uh, fortunes are surging again. And I think that there, even beyond Brexit, I think there is a need for a party that represents the interests of ordinary working class, small business owner, patriotic Britons. And in my view, that certainly isn't Labour or the Conservative Party. Where is it going to be surging? I'm just thinking geographically. Where are you going to be surging at the next election? Well, uh, I can't predict that, Hugh, and I'm not going to say we're going to No, but you well must have a sense, Joe, really. Is it, is it in uh, all well, these in areas the past, where you've in, lost so many people? Yeah, well, uh, politics is often a, a question of ups and downs, isn't it? It doesn't all go in a straight line. We've seen the Labour Party's been a little bit disappointed today. We've done very well, for example, in the West Country, in the, in, uh, the East of England. And, in fact, today we did very well. Um, in the north of England, where we won two seats, uh, uh, three seats uh, in actual fact, in two different councils. And in fact, we got 23, almost 23% of the vote in Redditch. So there are places where we uh, put the right messages out and we get a good result. And that's what I've got to try and build on over the next uh, year right, uh, so uh, how, of my... Um, so, Gerald, how helpful was it that, that Paul Oakley, your General Secretary, described it as the Black Death for you, Kip? Well, yes, it wasn't, uh, you know, it wasn't, wouldn't have been my choice of medieval historical <laughs> You don't analogy. say. Right. No, I would, have, I would have probably gone for Robert Burns and said, you know, uh, defeat, a defeat and then finally success. But unfortunately, uh, he chose that one. We've certainly been a plague on the houses of... Uh, the Tories and Labour, so maybe we can be a plague on well, their no, houses they, again. Well, they seem to have taken votes off you both, uh, uh, both those parties, and actually, mm. I mean, he's described it as the Black Death. Others have described mm. it as the collapse of UKIP. Um, I mean, do you accept now that voters that may have given their vote to the Tory party see that Conservatives as the party of Brexit now, that Theresa May is committed to leaving the customs union, the single market, mm. and there's no point giving you, think, UKIP, their vote? I think it's certainly the case that people see them as the party in power who have the 
have the power to deliver Brexit mm. if they really want to, and that's certainly why we've lost a lot of votes uh, and some of our votes went back to Labour. I think a lot of people didn't vote, also voted Conservatives because they didn't like Jeremy Corbyn's uh, momentum-style Labour Party, so that's been a factor. But thing, as I said, I think things will change as we go forward and people realise that they're not going to get the Brexit that they voted for in 2016, uh, when I think our support will build again. Right, I mean, uh, what about the party itself? I mean, you know, organisation, leadership swapping every five minutes. Um, I mean, without Nigel Farage, it, it just has not flourished in any way, has it? Yeah, we've had a difficult two years, and we've had, uh, you know, we've had people uh, uh, like Paul Nutters who did try to do a good job and put a lot of effort into it. Uh, we've had a disastrous leader in Henry Bolton, uh, and my job is to try and get things back on track. I'm trying to do that with a shortage of money with a shortage of professional people that we can pay to help us. Uh, but it is coming together. I've actually saved the party from going under financially. I'm now trying to build up donations so that we can actually pay for some professional help in the things that we need to do. We are put, we've stopped the decline in membership. People are joining again. And it isn't going to be done overnight. It isn't going to be done in five minutes, which is precisely why the membership of the party wanted me to do this for 12 months, so that I can put it back onto an even keel and a sound footing. And that's what I'm going to do for the next year. Uh, Gerard, good to talk to you. Thank you very much for coming in and talking to us today. Gerard Batten, the uh, uh, UKIP leader.